Today, let's talk about the drum replacement in Cubase 9. Hey guys, Chris here from Mixdown Online. I hope you're doing good. Now, if this is your first time here and you want to know more about music production, recording, mixing, and so on, you can click on the subscribe button below and the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Now, with that out of the way, let's get into it. Now, what we have here is an acoustic drum recording that is not mixed, okay? And what I'm going to do is replace the kick drum with a sample. What I usually do in this case, I uh, I love to blend the uh, the sample with the the actual uh, recording of the of the kick drum in this case. Uh, if the kick drum is really really bad though, I'm not afraid to replace it hundred percent. But if it's not that bad and I like the tone, but there's I just want to enhance it, I will just add a sample to it and just bring that kick drum to the next level. Okay, so in this case, this is what I'm gonna do. So first, let's listen to what we have. I'm gonna I'm gonna have you listen into the entire drum kit, okay, the drum recording, and I'm just gonna, at the same time, I will solo the kick drum so you can hear that kick drum, and I'll explain to you the reason why I want to replace it or just blend it with a sample. Now, that kick drum sounds a bit loose, okay, so I'm just gonna replace it. So what I often do is I use a plugin called Trigger and I insert that on the track on which I want to replace the sound and then Trigger does the rest. You just load your sample and uh, Trigger will replace that sound with the sample you selected. But in case you don't have a software to do so, a plugin like Trigger to replace your drum sound, what you can do is you can do everything directly in Cubase. Now this can be done in Cubase 9, uh, 8.5, 8, and I think 7 and 7.5, I believe. And for today's tutorial, I am going to be working directly in Cubase 9. So first, what you need to do is to uh, double click on your audio segment, okay, the one, like in our case, it's the bass drum, and then you go down into the editor. And on the left side, you're going to select hit points. Now, if you don't see hit points, just make sure your left zone is activated. Okay. And then by clicking on the, uh, the audio segment, you'll see hit points. Okay. You just open that tab. And now what you're going to do here is you're going to play with the threshold. Okay. So you're going to bring your threshold down until you see some hit points before each hits. Okay. And once you have all the hit points set up on your, uh, your kick track, or snare, whatever you want to replace, you click on create MIDI notes. And then voila, you have the convert hit points to MIDI notes window that opens. And for velocity modes, you have the choice between fixed velocity and dynamic velocity. Now, the reason why I select the dynamic velocity option is that there's a lot of drum sound banks that have several samples per sound, okay, that will get triggered depending on the velocity value of the MIDI notes. And then I'm going to click on OK. And down below, I'm going to have my uh, MIDI segment, okay, on a new MIDI track. So this is basically my audio kick drum converted into MIDI. And now I'm going to take that MIDI track and allocate that and send that into my uh, uh, my battery four instrument. So this is what I'm going to be using to replace my sound. You can actually use uh, any samplers you want. Okay, You can use Groove Agent SE directly in Cubase if you want and use their samples or load your own samples directly into Groove Agent or other samplers. So it doesn't matter which one you use. In my case, I'm going to be using battery four uh, because the uh, sound bank I'm using has some presets already set up for battery four. Let's first move my uh, MIDI segment into my battery uh, MIDI track here, my instrument track. And now I'm just going to open my sampler. And the way that works is uh, I have like a preset of all the kick drums available with this uh, sound bank. And uh, the way that works, the way they work anyway, uh, they have the uh, a dry sound and they have like a overhead sound and some rooms as well. So it gives you a lot of flexibility on the sample itself. So what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to probably just keep the dry signal. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to select my MIDI notes, I'm going to bring my velocity up, okay, so I can just uh, trigger the, um, the, the hard hits of the kick drum. 
and I am gonna move the notes until I get to the sample I want. Okay, let's go with this one. Okay, now I'm only gonna use the dry signal, so I'm just gonna mute the rooms and the overheads. Now, something to remember is when you blend a sample with the original sound, you need to check the phase relationship between the two sounds, okay? So, this is something I always check. I always flip the phase to uh, just to listen if it sounds fatter or thinner, and then I stick with uh, whatever sounds better. And once it's bounced into audio, something else I can do, I can just align the two waves together so they, they start at the same point and make sure uh, the polarity is the same, okay? So, this is stuff you need to do when you're uh, you're dealing with a sample and you want to blend it with the original uh, the original sound so in my case what I did here I already flipped the phase because I had a problem with the relationship of the phase so my sound was a bit too thin when the phase was uh, was off and then I just activate the phase button in Cubase and there you go it sounds way more fatter So if I blend it, this is what I get. So you dose that to your taste and or you replace it entirely. It depends on what you want to achieve here. So now that I have my sample, um, I'm ready to bounce my sample into audio. So this is something I always do, especially with drums. I love to have my drums on uh, audio tracks. Now, when I'm ready to bounce, I can just select my segment and ed click on edit, render in place. And this will bounce the MIDI sample into audio. Uh, directly into your project. Now, uh, this is the fastest way to do it, but for some reason, this will only create stereo tracks. Okay, so if I'm mistaken, guys, and you know how to, um, you know how to set that up to be able to bounce in mono within the render selection window, please let me know in the comments. But I wasn't able to find how to do it. If we can anyways. Um, so if you want to bounce in stereo, that's the way to do it. You can uh, click on dry and rename your track and you just render. If you want it to be bounced into mono, like in my case, I selected the close mic sample only without the, uh, the, the, the rooms and the overheads, only the close mic sample. So in my case, I want it to be mono, okay? So I want my audio track to be a mono track. So I am gonna select my segment and click on P as in Peter, and I just click on File, Export, and Audio Mixdown. But first, I need to solo the track. Okay, then Export, Audio Mixdown, and then uh, make sure Mono Down Mix is selected that you use project audio folder and that pool and audio track is uh, checked in as well. Okay, so this way uh, the uh, the track when bounced is going to be reinserted into your project. And there you go, you have your mono kick drum track. Cool, now what I do next, I just blend that with the original signal to my taste. And there you go, I just replaced my sound directly in Cubase without the use of any uh, third-party plugins. All right, guys, so this is it for today. I hope that was helpful. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And don't forget to subscribe, to like, and share. That helps the channel a lot. All right, I'll see you next time.